Not good when your air compressor motor doesn't turn. Um, I free turned it a little bit and it just hums, which means the start windings aren't gaining power. So I'm going to show you how to clean the contacts or make sure the centrifugal clutch in here is actually working and how all that works so you can get a uh, virtually any electric motor back up and going. So I spun off the belt so the belt is no longer putting um, pressure on the engine. But then I also took off the two. This is the uh, dual cap motor. So one's a run capacitor and one's a start capacitor. And I discharged them before I touched them. Um, I used actually a wooden hammer with a metal top to touch the two terminals. Well, there's four terminals, but there's just two. And I did that on both. So discharged the caps completely. And I don't think it's the caps, but I tested them anyway. And it's not. But I actually bought one of these years ago for... Uh, um, I don't even know how much it was. Under 20 bucks on Amazon, and it's come in so handy because on all the devices these days, it seems like they all just, the capacitors are always frying, especially on the electronics and stuff like that, and this is a good, easy way to test them. Both these test good. Doesn't always mean they are good, but they both test good, but I don't suspect these as being my issue. Um, let's plug that back in. Just get it out of the way. And now I've taken off the rear electrical cover, and I'm going to unplug the wiring, but I've also removed the four bolts. So there's four bolts, and there's huge screws that go all the way through. Virtually all electric motors are situated the same same way. Just a screw bolt goes all the way through four different positions. And that allows you to remove the whole rear cover. But to make it easier, we'll pull off this electrical wiring as well. Looks like I got my ground stripped on there. And this is just 120. It's completely unplugged. And we should just be able to pull this almost all the way out. It was, there's this little electrical block right here that will stay attached with the wires. We're going to pull that out. Being careful. And I could put this on the bench, take the whole compressor motor off. But I can do it right here as well. I can do it on the machine. It's not as easy as if I removed it, but it's a lot more work if I remove it. Well, not a ton more work. It's just easy. I can do it this way. There we go. Let's push these back in. And there's quite a bit of dust and stuff left in here because this was operated in a wood shop forever. But you can see that it needs to be blown out. But this is our main, um, this would be our, it's like a two speed transmission right here. And what happens is this is your centrifugal clutch right here. So in the off position or the start position, this is pushed in. And then once your start, once the engine gets up to just a little bit of speed, it kicks out. And that's run by this centrifugal clutch right here. So in the off position, these, this little fiber disc right here pushes, pushes on these. So once it starts spinning, centrifugal force throws these little weights out and then this sucks in and stops pushing on this and so then it contacts another spot. It switches from the start windings to the run windings. But this can gum up so you need to make sure this moves nice and freely. You can apply a little bit of light oil to that. Make sure your rear bearing is good. But we're going to focus mainly right up in here. And to do that I've got to unplug a lot of wires so I gotta, I'm got i going to write down where all these wires go and then I can just work on this on the bench. And we're left with this, and this gives you a better picture of it. This is essentially like our transmission. This is our first and second gear. Well, like an electronic transmission. But under there are going to be two little contacts. And I don't know if you can see, but they're pretty corroded. So when it's just in the start position, um, that pushes down and connects there and connects the start windings that uh, give it more torque to start spinning. So without that, it's just in a higher gear and not just humming. So I could probably actually, if it had nothing attached, um, spin it by hand and it would start going, but it's never going to work for charging a compressor, especially an engine that needs to start under load. So all I have to do is clean those contacts right under there. With a nice fine piece of sandpaper, probably uh, 150, 200 grit, probably 200 grit. And I'm going to fold that in half so I got sandpaper on both sides. But I'm just going to insert that in there. And we're just going to move it back and forth. So this one's working good now. 
But I'll show you a little bit different style. This is actually uh, a non-capacitor two-speed motor that you find in a lot of stuff. Um, well, usually you just probably have a single speed, but this is two-speed. This one's actually, the windings were shorted. Because what happens is when those uh, contacts fail, people leave it running and it just sits there and hums. Well, it shorts everything out. You know, it'll short out your windings and stuff like that. But I'll show you uh, a little bit different setup right here. And this one has the same thing, a little centrifugal clutch back here, does the exact same thing, pushes on these two things. But there are actually a double, on this one right here, there's actually two contacts. There's one, oops, there's one underneath and one right there. So when this is pushed down, it contacts one, and when it comes up, it contacts the other. And this side is just one down. And you can just, same thing, just clean up those. And those are pretty common to go out. Get all the wires plugged back in. But these little contacts right here, these are actually getting a little bit worn. But they rub directly on this fiber disc, so they can actually wear out as well. So it doesn't hurt to apply just a little bit of, a, of a grease. And there's actually grease right there, but it doesn't hurt to apply a little bit of grease to that. And that'll help just lube up these little feet. But pretty much I just got to put it back together and see if this works. I have it plugged back in. Um, wires are sitting there. Caps are sitting here nice and dangerous. But just so I can test it, just to make sure everything works, it's sitting in, it's still at 80 some odd PSI, so it's not like it's starting from zero. So it's still load for this motor. So let's see if it fires up. Yep, no problem. And if you're curious, well, what's it? If you're curious what I got going on here, I actually have an old DeVilbis tank that had like a really crappy. Um, compressor on there. It was so loud, so hideous, and it finally died after th thousands and thousands of hours at the wood shop I used to run. But um, this right here is actually a Quincy, and so Quincy makes some of the best compressors out there. And I actually picked up a Quincy from a guy for free that was on a um, 10 or 15 gallon tank that he had never really drained the tank, so the tank was rusted out. So I you can see that there's almost there's a different top. So I took I just cut off the top of the other one and welded it smack dab there. Plumbed in you know the lines that it needs to do. This is off the original one. Nothing's changed, but this is all Quincy stuff. It was purple. You can kind of see the purple. Everything old stuff is Quincy, but Quincy stuff is amazing. And this is a little two cylinder. And they put this same motor and um, pump on 60 gallon stuff like this. And that was years and years ago, and it's worked flawlessly. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Hopefully this uh, helps somebody out there and saves somebody's motor for something. See you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.